but he's sharp, he's bright. His parents are divorced and he comes from a broken home. And I'm a mentor to him because he comes up to me and he's always asking me to, for help. I've taken, him, I've taken him out on field trips with his school. I've tutored him through, his, through some of the, the stuff that he's had to go through. I've talked to him on the phone several times. He's such a beautiful little boy. What he does not know is that it was his father who killed my father. His parents have never told him, and he will never learn it from me. See, ladies and gentlemen, I told you one day my father said somebody would look up to me. And every time I see him, I see my father. But I asked everybody, you know, what do parents really, really know? It's amazing. I think I answered that. Now I'm going to wrap up by, by thanking a few people here. First of all, thank you Atwater High School for allowing me to be your guest of honor today. Now I appreciate everything that, that you know, all the respect that you guys have given me, so thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate it. I need to thank the Office of Traffic Safety and the California Highway Patrol. The Office of Traffic Safety puts up a $10,000 grant for this program. And right now as we speak, several schools, Calaveras High School, Sonora High School, this high school, they're all doing this exactly right now at the same time. So I've got a lot of schools all doing this right now as we speak. Thousands and thousands of dollars are put into this program. But see, money can be replaced. Money can be reprinted. Your life can't. So thank you to the Office of Traffic Safety, the California Highway Patrol. Thank you to all the medical crews, fire crews. You, you, thank you to all the judges. The, you know, you, you guys realize this is a huge, huge, huge event. And a lot of people put a lot of effort in this. Thank you to all the parents for your sacrifice in the last 24 hours. And thank you. I wasn't quite done. <laughs> but thank you to all the living dead. See, we have a saying in law enforcement that if we can go our entire career and just change one life for the better, it was worth our entire career. So thank you for the sacrifice you guys have made in the last 24 hours. Somebody's life was affected by this. It could be the person next to you, it could be the person sitting out in the audience, it could be a parent, it could be somebody that reads about this, somebody that sees the film, whatever the case may be, somebody's life was effective. And what you guys have done in the last 24 hours has taken me over 15 years of law enforcement to do. So thank you guys. And finally, I wanna thank my father. Dad, I am the police officer, the man, the husband I am today because of you. Thank you for never giving up on me and always being there when I needed you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Let me tell you about Jenny. Jenny was so happy about the house they had found. For once in her life, it was on the right side of town. She unpacked her things with such great ease as she watched her curtains blow in the breeze. How wonderful it was to have her own room. School would be starting. She'd have friends over soon. There'd be sleepovers and parties, and she was so happy. It's just the way she wanted her life to be. On the first day of school, everything went great. She made new friends and even got a date. She thought, I want to be popular. And I'm going to be, because I just got a date with the star of the team. To be known in this school, you had to have clout. And dating this guy would sure help out. There was only one problem stopping her fate. Her parents had said that she was too young to date. Well, I just won't tell them the entire truth. They won't know the difference. What's there to lose? 
Jenny asked to stay with her friends. <clears throat> Jenny asked her parents to stay with her friends that night. Her parents frowned, but they said, "All right." Excited, she got ready for the big event. But as she rushed around like she had no sense, she began to feel guilty about all the lies. But what's a pizza, a party, and a moonlight ride? Well, the pizza was good and the party was great, but the moonlight ride would have to wait. For Jeff was half drunk by this time, but he kissed her and said that he was just fine. The room filled with, with smoke as Jeff took a puff. Jenny couldn't believe he was smoking that stuff. Now Jeff was ready to ride to the point, but only after Jeff smoked another joint. They jumped in the car for the moonlight ride, not thinking that he was too drunk to drive. They finally made it to the point at last, and Jeff started trying to make a pass. A pass is not what Jenny wanted at all, and by a pass I don't mean playing football. Perhaps my parents were right. Maybe I am too young. Boy, how could I ever be so dumb? With all of her might, Jeff, Jenny pushed Jeff away. Please take me home, I don't want to stay. Jeff cranked up the engine and floored the gas, but in a matter of seconds they were going too fast. As Jeff drove away in a fit of wild anger, Jenny knew that her life was in danger. She begged and pleaded for him to slow down, but he just got faster as they neared the town. Just let me go home, I'll confess that I lied. I just wanted to go out for a moonlight ride. Then all of a sudden she saw a big flash. Oh God, please help, we're gonna crash. She doesn't remember the force of the impact, just that everything all of a sudden went black. She felt someone remove her from the twisted rubble and heard, call an ambulance, these kids are in trouble. Voices she heard, a few words at best, but she knew there were two cars involved in the wreck. Then wondered to herself, if Jeff was all right, and if the people in the other car, were they still alive? She awoke in the hospital with faces so sad. You've been in a wreck, Jenny, and it looks pretty bad. These voices echoed inside of her head as they gently told her that Jeff was dead. They said, Jenny, we've done all we can do, but it looks as if we're gonna lose you too. But the people in the other car, Jenny cried. We're sorry, Jenny. They also died. Jenny prayed, God, forgive me for what I've done. I only wanted to have just one night of fun. Tell those people's family whose lives that I've made dim. I wish I could return their family to them. Tell mom and dad that I'm sorry I lied, and it's my fault that so many have died. Oh, nurse, won't you please tell them that for me? The nurse just stood there. She never agreed. She took Jenny's hand with tears in her eyes. A few minutes later, Jenny died. A man asked the nurse, why didn't you do your best to bid that girl her one last request? The nurse looked at the man with eyes so sad because the people in the other car were Jenny's mom and dad. In life, you make many choices and decisions. And you live every day with the consequences of the choices that you make. Now we, the CHP first responders, police department, parents, school faculty, we're not naive to think that some of you aren't gonna go out and some of you are gonna drink even though you know it's illegal. We know it's gonna happen. Here's what we ask. At that critical time, when it's time to make that decision, and it's the decision that could affect the rest of your life. We ask you to make the right one. Don't get behind the wheel of a vehicle and drive after you've been drinking. Don't get into a vehicle with another person who has. That's what we ask. Some things that happen out there on the roadways are out of your control and we understand that. All we're asking is that you do your part to give yourself the best chance to make it to your future. Make the right decision. Ask Mr. Peterson to come forward, please. Mr. Braga, can we uh, turn the uh, gym lights on, please?
To all the adults in the gym, you know, there are days, no matter our job, no matter our title, where we ask ourselves, do we really make a difference? And for every first responder and every educator and every person or business that supports every 15 minutes, the answer is yes. This program has saved countless, countless of lives. Even for those of you that don't always pay attention, it sinks in. To all of our students, the next month will be full of fun, accomplishment, friends, family, the prom, and finally, graduation. Please, please keep yourself safe. Make good decisions, always, and when that individual tries to get in the car when they shouldn't, you take the keys away. Do what you have to do to make sure it doesn't happen. We have many, many people to thank. It takes uh, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to put this event on and a lot of coordination. But first, to all the parents, and all the students that participated in every 15 minutes, thank you. Actually, why don't you all stand? Our, all of our uh, living dead, our students, parents. Thank you for having the courage to participate and putting your emotions on the line. Thank you, students, you can sit down. And all of our first responders in the room, can you please stand? These are the folks that are there for us every day when we need them the most. Thank you. And our sponsor events, RPM Mortgage, Always Towing, Via Trailways, Holiday Inn Express Hotel and Suites, Merced County EMS Agency, Mercy Hospital, Williams Family Funeral Chapel, Jeff's Productions, Starlight Video, SenCal Events, Riggs Ambulance, Atwater Police Department, Cal Fire, Atwater Fire Department, and the Merced County Sheriff's Department. Thank you to all of you for sponsoring this event. I want to thank all of our staff members for keeping this quiet and on the down low for the last uh, couple of months. I want to thank our administration for doing an outstanding job. And where is Ms. Palisier? Ms. Palisier leads this effort. Can you raise your hand and stand? Let's give her a hand. She's probably uh, setting up lunch right now. Also, our custodial and maintenance staff. Uh, who had a lot to do with this, and our Fab Five students, the five students that knew about this ahead of time, helped coordinate it and pull it off. Shannon Finn, will you stand? Give her a hand. <laughs> Samantha Murphy. <laughs> Fabiola Ramirez. Emily Rogers and Jackie Basquez. Thank you, ladies. I want to thank Mrs. Aguilar for the makeup, Mrs. Alexander for the food, Mrs. Ekman and Mrs. Bauer for chaperoning our event last night. And Officer Vargas, where are you? Please stand. Officer Vargas is our school resource officer. Thank you for all your efforts. And our last, uh, but not least, staff member, Mr. Braga. Thank you for all you do. And a special thanks to Linda Diaz. 
who helps coordinate the event, and Officer John Patterson. <laughs> Officer Patterson does an outstanding job with this. So again, thank you to all who helped pull this off.